Well, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody to the December 20th, 2018 <coughs> special meeting of the Guyman City Council. At this time, I'd like to invite Father Christopher Brashears of St. Peter's Catholic Church to come out and give our invocation. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. God, we give you thanks and praise for the time and talent of this council as they put their abilities to the service of our community. May you bless them with an abundance of wisdom, patience, and prudence as they discern the right decisions to help bring about justice for each and for all in our community. May you bless them abundantly in their lives here in their service and in their homes. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Mr. Schweiger, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> call this meeting to order. Agenda item number two is the attendance roll call. Cron? Here. Alvedras? Here. Swager? Here. Living Good? Here. Peterson? Here. Hoffman? Here. Mr. Petty? Here. Mr. Wagner? Here. Agenda item number three is public comments and announcements. Public comments and announcements. Agenda item number four is approval of the consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the uh, item to have the purchase orders processed on the 27th as if it had been a regular meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number five is presentation of monthly activities and financial re report by Main Street Gun. Ms. Johnson. Yes. We you still got your red on? I do. <laughs> well, they played a good game. Be yeah. Good. Celebrating the, the different countries with my Scotties. Okay, we have, this is November's report. Mm -hmm. The mobsters, we had nine of them that went to Wild Boutique, but we also did individuals to Dizzy Bees. And pertinence to the city is through the cash mob and the lunch mob, it probably brings in about $100 to city sales tax. I went back to on all the reports and pulled the numbers. So about 4% of what we spend on that has is about that much. Is that but, per month? That, that would be for the year. Okay. The BOP business and breakfast was held on November 13th. This is the second one that is live local. The first was the year before, and it um, it was it's geared. The business and breakfast is geared for our business members to learn more about different topics that they choose to help them do better with their businesses. And then it's on the PTCI's on the Briggs program. So if they don't get to go to the meeting, they can watch it on the TV show. Main Street, Oklahoma came and they were here for three days. We do the chart, and I think I told you this last, last month, but we do the chart where they sign everything, everything they spend in Diamond while they're here and it was over $12,000, which includes the rooms. The rooms, the gas, the meals, because they included their, whatever they bought. Because we have the big, we have a large lunch time so that they'll go shopping. And we had a progressive <coughs> shopping thing downtown. And so the group spent over $12,000 and that's about 480 in sales, city sales tax from that group plus the bed tax. But I didn't mark down the 
most of them spent 129 and they spent two nights so Pangea sold out you can read about that uh, we made a profit of nine hundred and twenty two dollars it was sponsored the premier sponsor was seaboard career focus we graduated our class this time this came about because we had somebody that her employer wanted to send her to a professional development class and the cost was so expensive that she went through and worked it up and we've been offering it now for four years we've filled it up with 15 people each year and this is who took part this year first national bank of hooker brown and associates tcec pchc bank of the panhandle ptci good street that's the barriuses city of guyman and ymca and it's a, it's an excellent class very good we have a lot of good speakers here the shop small initiative was held and Kayla told me that they had a really good shopping day there but I haven't found out she said it was the biggest weekend they'd had but that could have been topped after you know recently one of the things that I didn't have on here because I didn't know at the time I did it for 2018 we have sold six thousand two hundred and thirty dollars in main bucks <clears throat> main bucks means that well today a man came in and bought a hundred dollars main bucks for his wife to give her for christmas because then she can spend it here in town but every time we give main bucks that means that they they must spend their money here in guyman and we've had several out of town people win it and so it stays right here, right here at our Main Street members. And so for 2018, that'd be a little more than $250 in city sales tax just from the main bucks alone. Granted, they may have spent it anyway. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but we know they spent it here rather than in Liberal. Our November vital volunteer is Charles White. We had 341 hours, 94 different volunteers. And that's the majority. Oh, you, you have a green piece of paper there and that shows some of our programs. And I just thought I would give that to you. And if you have any questions about any of those programs, I'd just love to tell you about them. But you can email me too. Any questions? I think we're good. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Agenda item number six is discussion of possible action on approval of ordinance number 842, an ordinance rezoning tract 8C in the north half of the southeast <coughs> quarter of section 32, township 3 north, range 15, ECM of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Guyman from A1 General Agriculture District to R1 Single Family Residential District, providing for severability and repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith and declaring an emergency. Is there any questions from the council? These are gonna be homes or would be homes uh, similar to what is in what is it Blazing Trail or whatever? I mean that that's what we, you you can put in R one. You can put right R one. And sorry, Mayor, but the R one is specific to single family homes. Okay. Single family, and and it could be any size. I think okay. fifteen hundred to four thousand square feet. So my question is, why wouldn't they just continue going? behind blazing trail why are we going to put another section of homes separate right when they're i mean they're going to be right next to each other but why won't you just continue to go out blazing trail i i can't answer that councilman of what land they did purchase or are purchasing it that if there's something i i don't know who owns the land in between it it was this specific land that they asked between okay. uh agriculture to be rezoned to an r1 
As to the land in between it, I don't know. Mr. Mitchell. I, I can't answer that question, but I wanted to let you know that we received the application mid-November. Uh, we posted the property, sent out letters. We did not receive any uh, letters back from homeowners or property owners in that area. Uh, and the Planning Commission met Tuesday night, uh, reviewed the request, and approved the rezoning from okay. agriculture to R1. And under the R1 zone, it's limited strictly to single-family residential properties. The next step would be once they receive their rezoning, then they would go through the process of planning and subdividing our, the subdivision process. So then you would be able to tell perhaps how many units they're planning to build and that sort of thing. But uh, right now, all we know is, is that it's planned for a single-family development. And that, if you're familiar with the, lo I gave you a location map and a zoning map. Uh, mm -hmm. That property is on Herleman, and it backs up to about a 60, 70 acre parcel that's currently zoned R2. Yeah. So there are uh, residential zoning districts in that area. So it's consistent with both our comprehensive plan and our land use plan that you've adopted uh, this year. Any questions? Any questions? Appreciate it. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 842, rezoning tract 8C uh, from agricultural to R1, single family residential district. Second. Have a motion and second. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. I'll make a motion that we declare this an emergency. Second. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Okay. <clears throat> Agenda item number seven is discussion and possible action on approval of resolution number 18-14. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Guyman, Oklahoma, establishing an investment policy for the City of Guyman. I think this is something we do every year. Correct. It's a yearly renewal allowing Lynn to do the investment policies for the City of Guyman. It'll be on all four agendas tonight. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution number 18. Dash 14A, resolution of the city I'll second council it. of the city of Guyman, item 7. <coughs> you through now. I'll second, second it. Have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 8 is discussion of possible action to approve the renewal of the Taser International Agreement. This was currently tabled as a question of Mr. Alvidrez. Uh, we first approved the Taser X26 uh, in 2008. Um, what this, we bought those using drug forfeiture monies. And <clears throat> beforehand, um, <clears throat> there's normally a five year cycle as it pertains to these certain equipments. They wear out or they expire and it's just kind of a, um, inadequate use going forward so you always need to follow the upgrades as it pertains to the technology what um, this does is in this contract it allows us to set aside the funds for every time that term expires to purchase the new equipment so you're not all hit at once it's not a major giant expense so really it saves us money uh, by using our taser equipment going forward um, that way whenever it comes to the time of the expired technology you can get the tasers up front and it just applies so it's a good deal for the city okay. thank you mr mitchell wagner wagner 
If you need to be tased, let me know. <laughs> I've got you back. I was wondering if that would warrant a tasing right there. Thank you, hey. Mr. Wagner. I, was, I wanted to get. I wanted to get. I wanted to get tased because he, he thought he owed me with that. I make a motion that we approve the renewal of the Taser International Agreement, item eight. Second. Have a motion and second. Crone. Aye. Swager. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five eyes. <laughs> Chief, we should have had a demonstration. Yeah. That's what I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> oh, we I thought one. he was going to yeah. volunteer. Agenda <laughs> <laughs> item number nine is discussion of possible action mm -hmm. to approve the renewal of the collection contract between Purdue and the city of Guyana. We got out of that previous contract. Y'all allowed me to do this. I think it was around June last year. I'm just putting it back up on for we can do a yearly renewal from this point forward. They're our collection agency as it pertains to municipal court and utility billing. I make a motion that we approve the renewal of the contract between Purdue and the city of Guyman. Second. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Crun? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 10 is a discussion of possible action on approval of a professional service agreement between the City of Guyana and M2 Municipal Solutions, LLC. Just a reputable corporation. Any discussion? Motion? I make a motion that we approve the professional service agreement between the City of Guyman and in M2 Municipal Solutions, LLC. Second. I have a motion and a second. Living Good. Aye. Crone. Aye. Swager. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 11 is discussion of possible action to approve the software support maintenance contract between the city incorporated in the City of Guyman. Lucidity, just um, a little FYI, Lucidity is our, we have been using currently for the last three years. Uh, it, are, it allows us with a uh, work order system through the city of Guyman to track uh, from personnel to time to any other aspect of, um, if someone calls in, we can track the work order to completion. Um, Y'all have heard about it in the past, but it's just, it's the work order software system that we've used currently and we would like to continue using that, uh, that way we can continue to track everything that comes into the city of Gaiman. Um, and we also rate it on a, you know, whether it's a one, two or three, how quickly will we get to that process so it um, adheres to the citizens' uh, needs. <clears throat> Did IBTS have any part bringing this to the city of Gaiman? Lucidity was, um, it's not an IBTS owned software right. system but um, they did bring it to and we would like to continue using it because our personnel has now been trained with it any contracts would be city of Guyman now with lucidity right it is not IBTS this is a 100% city it's it's its own freestanding contract it has nothing to do with IBTS going forward thank you any other discussion questions make a motion to approve software support maintenance contract between the city uh, in the city of Guyman. Second. <coughs> have a motion and a second. Crone. Aye. Swager. Aye. Living Good. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 12 is discussion of possible action on approval of the elevator maintenance agreement between the city of Guyman and Otis Elevator Company. Council, I'm going to ask that you table this item until some further uh, information is discussed as that has been brought to our attention by Mr. Petty. Um, we've been without for a while, I think we should table this until I can get a little more clarification. Make so. a motion that we table item 12. A second. Have a motion and a second. Living Good? Aye. Crone? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 13 is discussion and possible action on approval of the budget amendment number five for the general fund for an increase of $106,750. <clears throat> Let's just clean up 
It's cleaning up. Uh, there were some expenses that exceeded the budget that we were unaware of at the time. Um, as we continue forward with the transition away from IBTS, um, the way it was stated previous is that the city was to take on the fuel and oil uh, for those services. We would continue to provide those and that has actually increased um, somewhat. Uh, the OAC grant expenses not reimbursed at this point. Um, really, this is just a cleanup item for the year end so we can finalize and go forward. I've got a question on the item C, the pickup lapsed service during the IBTSs concerning the software and software support? Correct. So um, <clears throat> as it pertains to ENCODE, which is we have ENCODE 10 in Municipal Court and ENCODE 9 that we use throughout the rest of the building. Whenever those services came on, IBTS took over those, ex those expenses. They paid for it. Uh, as we go back and get out of the contract, IBTS is going out. The city of Guyman is now retaining those. We tried, we worked with it. Tyler Technologies, which owns ENCODES, told us and notified that you would have to pay to get back up to speed from all that technology that you missed prior to the IBTS agreement coming in. So that's why? That's why it okay. is to what it is. We just can't start from <clears throat> right. December We've, 31st. Yes, there's been much e email correspondence amongst Tyler and the city of Guyman as we try to get back within our system going forward. But there is nothing we can do. And unfortunately, um, the increase that we have to pay to catch up, we have to do at this time. Okay. And then on the items E, exceeded anticipated expenses, I'm not sure why we're picking up this tab instead of IBTS. I understand, Councilman. Um, the, as it pertains to the drug testing, um, as some of these other employees have gone on, and that was based off me whenever IBTS, we kind of announced in the event we needed to start hiring personnel, I made the decision to go ahead and start hiring for the city of Guyman, okay. even though this contract is not ended currently. Um, and I had to get the ball moving with as it is a drug test or an administration expenses. We didn't budget for that. We weren't prepared for that, but we did give IBTS notice they're going away and I had to get going as we fall into January 1. Okay. So I made that move. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? I make a motion that we approve budget amendment number five for general fund of increase of $106,750, item 13. Second. I have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. <clears throat> and item number 14 is discussion and possible action on approval of budget amendment number two for the hotel motel tax fund for an increase of $250,000. I'll make a motion that we approve budget amendment number two for the hotel motel tax fund for an increase of $250,000. Second. I have a motion and a second. Living good? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 16 is discussion and possible action on approval of the final plat for the Chapman edition. What about? Did I miss one? 15. I think 15. Oh, okay. Let's go back. Excuse me. Agenda item number 15. Well, they both said the same amount of money. <laughs> one is it? number 15 is discussion of possible action on approval of budget amendment number six for the Guyman Development Fund for an increase of $250,000. So the reason they state the same one was a payment, one is a transfer. Make the motion that we approve budget amendment number six no, for perfect. Guyman Development Fund for the increase of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> item fifteen. Second. Swager. Aye. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five eyes. Okay. You now. To listen to the last. No, I did Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're ready for agenda number 16. <laughs> Discussion of possible action on approval of the final plan for the chat. 
Now is this the is that the, this the corner of twelfth uh, and, and fifty four, right by the uh, railroad tracks? Okay, kind of across from the truck stop. Uh, it'd be behind the truck stop, uh, behind the tire facility. I think that's a good year to store. That's okay, behind that, behind there, that, that area behind yes. there. Okay. Discussion? Questions? I make a motion that we approve the final plan of the Chapman edition. Second. I have a motion to second. Alvedras? Aye. Cron? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number 17 is discussion of possible action on approval of the airport hangar leases for 2019. The list is attached. I'll make a motion that we approve the airport hangar leases for 2019. Second. Motion second. Living good? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda number item number 18 is discussion and possible action to appoint or reappoint members of various boards and commissions whose terms expire December 31st, 2018. I think we got a handout. Um, I'll go through there and the ones we have we have we can approve the ones that have completed an application and have just expressed a desire to continue. There's some that have expressed a desire not to want to be on them. On the air, airport board, uh, Josh Sasson, Sasson didn't want to serve again. Uh, Cy Perkins has completed an application is expressing his willingness to serve. Uh, we have two people, or one that uh, Britt Brooks is interested in serving taking Josh's place, I assume. So Royce Miller's been attended, but he hasn't expressed any desire. So do we want to handle these on a board by board basis? That's however y'all would like to do it. Well, you can do it all That's inclusive or you can go okay. board by board if you'd like. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, Mr. Perkins for the airport board. I'll second it. Motion and second. Alvedras. He's the only one that completed the application. Yeah. So far. Aye. Living good. Aye. Swager. Aye. Crone. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five eyes. Uh, Arts and Humanities Commission. Miranda Gilbert has completed an application. Ashley Ortiz does not want to serve again. Bo Hawkins has completed an application and Becky Robinson is asked to be removed. So we have two that have completed an application. We'll have, we'll have two appointments that need to be filled okay. at a later time, I guess. Yeah. I make a motion that we approve Miranda Gilbert and Buell Hawkins for the Arts and Humanities Commission. Second. I have a motion and second. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. On convention and tourism, I'm not sure. Sean Patel, evidently, I think he's wanting to get, get off. I'm not sure. He doesn't say. Mm. Sam <coughs> Botka has completed an application, and Larry Bueller does not want to serve again. So we have one that's completed an application, and that would leave two open ones to fill. I'll make a motion that we approve Sam Bakta for the Convention and Tourism Board. Second. A motion and a second. Living Good? Aye. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. For the Golf Board, Lance Kemp does not want to serve again. Randy Coble's completed an application, and Terry Moore's completed an application. 
Make a motion to approve Randy Coble and Terry Moore for the golf board. Second. I have a motion to second. Crone? Aye. Swager? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. The Hispanic Advisory Board, which has become an inactive board, uh, we have no committal either way from either one of them, so I guess we can just table that and move on. Library Board, Evelyn Schmidt has completed an application. Carlos Urias does not want to serve again. So that gives us one to fill. I make a motion that we approve Evelyn Schmidt, Evelyn Schmidt for the library board. Second. Have a motion to second. Crone? Aye. Living good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Parks and Tree Board, Nancy Dales completed an application, Bay Costner's completed an application, and Marissa Durbin has completed Newborn has completed an application. Make, make, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve uh, Nancy Dale, Faye Costner, Marissa Dubon for the Parks and Tree Board. Second. A motion to second. Swager? Aye. Cron? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. And the Board of Appeals, uh, there's not been any indication for me the three, and we haven't have no have had no interest shown from anybody else, so I assume we can take that to a later date. Okay. We'll stand adjourned as the young city council. Special meeting of the Guyman Industrial Authority. Agenda item number two is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of September 27th, 2018. Make a motion that we approve the minutes. Item two. Second. I have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number three is discussion and possible action on approval of resolution number 18-01. Resolution of the Trustees of the Guyman Industrial Authority of the City of Guyman, Oklahoma Municipal Trust. Trust establishing an investment policy for the Guyman Industrial Authority. I make a motion that we approve resolution number 18-01, a resolution of the Trustees of the Guyman Industrial Authority of the City of Guyman, a Municipal Trust establishing an investment policy for the Guyman Industrial Authority. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Is there something wrong? It doesn't look right. Yes. yes. Where am I? Okay, I'm sorry. Like you said airport. Aye. <laughs> Living good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Got five ayes. Well, I started out saying airport board, but industrial board okay. came up next That's on like the bonus Just making list. sure we were okay. And I didn't want to get That's off all I was the bonus list <laughs> Okay, we'll stand adjourned as the Guyman Industrial Authority. Mm -hmm. We'll reconvene as the Guyman Airport Authority. Agenda item number two is approved the minutes of the regular meeting of November 27th of 2018. Make a motion that we approve the minutes, November 27, 18. Item two. We'll second. Have a motion and a second. Living good. Aye. Crown? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number three is discussion and possible action on approval of the resolution number 18-01. Resolutions of a resolution of the trustees of the Guyman Airport Authority of the City of Guyman, Oklahoma, the Municipal Trust, establishing an investment policy for the Guyman Airport Authority. I make a motion that we approve resolution number 1801, resolution of the trustees of the Guyman Airport Authority. City of Guyman, Oklahoma. Item three. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Living good? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Stand adjourned as the Guyman Airport Authority. We'll reconvene as the Guyman Utilities Authority. 
agenda item number two is approve the minutes of the regular meeting. Wait, we were. We don't have to do that again. Mm -hmm. That was a consent agenda. Agenda item number three is discussion and possible action to approve the renewal of the following agreements with Inframark Wastewater Operation and Maintenance Agreement and the Wastewater waste work authorization. They used, go ahead. Who were Inframark? It used to be, it was currently called Severn Trent. Yeah, they right. made a, 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 I guess, a acquisition. Well, they, they split. Uh, they were an English-based company around June last year. Currently Severn Trent, and that's still over in England. They call themselves Inframark now because they're an American-based company. We used to be hit up by, uh, we used to get hit up by DEQ quite a bit that any reports in 2018? Um, to, to my knowledge, anything that was addressed um, has been cleaned up. And uh, I can tell you prior to Severn Trent or Inframark, we had some issues out there. It seems to be going smoothly at this point. I make a motion that we approve the renewal of the following agreements with Inframark, uh, item uh, 3.1, 3.2, encompass item number three. Second. I have a motion and a second. Swager. Aye. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living Good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda <clears throat> item number four is discussion and possible action on approval of resolution number 18-04, resolution of the trustees of the Government Utilities <coughs> Authority the City of Guyman, Oklahoma Municipal Trust, establishing an investment policy for the Guyman Utilities Authority. I make a motion that we approve resolution number 1804, resolution of the trustees of Guyman Utilities Authority of the City of Guyman, Oklahoma Municipal Trust, item four. Second. I have a motion and a second. Swager. Aye. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Living Good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five ayes. Agenda item number five is discussion of possible action on approval of budget minute number two for the GUA sales tax CIF fund for an increase of $2,359. I've got a question. What's the to increase appropriates for increased payments to the trustee bank? Right. This was at an increased cost off the 2016 A note that we were paying to Cardinal Engineering for their services throughout the year. Uh, there was one, I can't remember now, I don't have it in front of me, but there was some other things that Rick and his team had to go above for, as pertains to uh, one of them that we had an issue with. Okay. It's an increased fund, but it is paid to Cardinal Engineering so we can clean up that 2016-2015 A note. I make a motion that we approve budget uh, number amendment number two for the GA sales tax uh, CIF fund for an increase of two thousand three hundred and fifty nine dollars. Second. I have a motion and a second. Crone. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Swaker. <coughs> Aye. Living good. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We've got five eyes. Agenda item number six is discussion regarding outstanding liabilities pertaining pertaining to vacation and leave for employees. Mr. Wagner. I put a discussion item on here so in the event y'all wanted to ask any questions you could because this is change. Um, as we continue with uh, the transition, going back to everything coming to the city, as you look at it, you have some, in my opinion, outstanding liabilities that we are subject to uh, from the city side um, and this has been accumulating for many many years it is a huge amount um, now as it worked in the past it was an accrued basis within sick and vacation as it has gotten to a point now that people rely on sick and vacation as an added benefit um, that was promised to them. Uh, in my opinion, we owe that to those employees. And as they come back over, um, I think we should clean it up. Uh, that way it's not outstanding a year from now and it's not outstanding 30 years from now. Um, as you go forward, you have a cleaner 
meter. Um, and yes, that is still something on the books, but you know your costs is what I'm saying. Um, as it states now, over 30 years accumulation of what you started at to what you're finishing with your pay and you cash out on your vacation and sick, it is a huge debt that is owed from the city to those employees. I am changing and I gave you both <coughs> the old and I'm giving you the new uh, from the accrued sick and vacation to the PTO schedule that will be uh, given to the employees January 1 as we are all inclusive as the city of Guymon at that time. It is fair. Uh, I think it will be a good thing for the city. We get to clean up the books is what I'm doing. Um, we won't have that outstanding liability at the end of 2019. Now with what is out there at this point, um, what <clears throat> I am inclined to do is not take that big hit at the beginning of 2019 in a couple weeks. What I will do is pay it off in four quarters. That way it's not just one big jump and hit um, first month of 2019, which would really hurt us within our budget. I would say that I'm going to pay this off over the course of the four quarters in 19 and as you reach 2020 council you do not have that outstanding liability that you don't know what is looming at that point so the pto schedule is a good thing um, and i think it's fair to our employees uh, that are current or transitioning that we clean up these books and it it sets us in the right direction is what i'm saying uh, 10 years 20 years 30 years from now you don't have it because it's owed to them at that time. You're going to pay it one way or the other. Uh, it'd be better just to clean it up at this point and go forward with something that you know uh, where you stand financially uh, in the event somebody is going to retire or quit. So I just wanted to give you all the heads up. If you all have any questions, I know it's changed. It's different. It's a different way of thinking, but it's cleaner and it takes a lot of liability away from the city of Guymon. So it's fair. Um, I, I've thought a lot about it. I've worked really hard on this uh, along with some other staff and I'm, I'm proud of it. So it's a good thing for the city to clean these books up. Is there any action that the council needs to take? You do not need to take this. You would see this, Larry, as it goes forward with the year. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Um, and I just wanted to give you the heads up that it is change and it's a different way of going about something that has probably been in the process for 40 or 50 years. Um, I, I don't know how long it goes back with the accrual basis of sick and vacation time, but I can tell you that the sick time in particular is astronomical of what has been accumulated in the course of some 30 and 35 years. And that is just something that has not ever been addressed. It's never been cleaned. It's not a, um, in my opinion, it's not efficient. Uh, we need to clean up the books going forward so you don't have that looming cloud for a rainy day that's sitting back there because you don't know. And one way or the other, it is going to be given. Um, you just rather know as opposed to it continue to accumulate, in my opinion. It just, it's moving, a, moving forward, there'll be a maximum. There is a maximum. Um, as you see in my PTO schedule, it is a max. So. It is not going to <clears throat> continue to accumulate right. uh, with 20, 30 years of employment to get to these numbers that is just a, I mean, it is a big liability for the city. And it's, you know, I understand that at one time maybe that was a perk that somebody got. And, you know, I, I can't speak for other administrations. I'm just saying that going forward, we should clean this up. And after 2019, when this is all completed and paid off, you are set. Um, it, it's not going to get out of hand uh, to where you have this huge amount 20 years from now. So we're, we're, try, we're turning it into, into a yearly funded mandate rather than an unfunded, an unfunded mandate that might show up 30 years from now. Well, and I, Correct, but the, the big factor is, is if you have, um, and don't get me wrong, I understand you don't know the future as it pertains to a sick time, but you have 
on the books some employees that had massive amounts of sick time that has accumulated throughout careers. And don't get me wrong, in the event you need it, it's great that it's there, but it's still just sitting there. And if it hasn't been used and you're not sick, um, it's being used more towards a bonus or an end of retirement check, and that's not really what it was ideally used for. I don't, and I want to be clear, my PTO schedule, and as you gentlemen see it, is not shortening. It is fair, more than fair. It is a great thing for recruitment. It is a great thing for retainment. It is a great thing for our employees to utilize if they need it, and that's what it is. It's in the event you need it, and if it's vacation or sick, in my opinion, I don't it's not my business. Um, everyone that works for us is adults, and if they want a sick day or a vacation day, it's not my business. If you want personal time off, that's what it is. It's personal time off. I don't need to know it. As long as it's approved through your supervisor and through me, I'm good with it. It is a fair amount of PTO, and I think that our employees are going to enjoy this new PTO policy. It seems really fair. It does. Okay. But it'll also help us in recruiting and retaining some of these great employees because it is a huge perk. It's just not going to continue to accumulate through a 30-year career to where at the end we're going to have to pay it one way or the other. So we're just cleaning up the books is what I'm saying. Okay. But if an employee calls in sick four days in a row, mm -hmm. there's no... You need a doctor's note to come back to work or anything like That's that? That's a different part of our employee manual. But yes, yeah, I mean, there is part of this will be added to our employee ma okay. manual that I will have you, I will bring before you as I finalize it and get everything hashed out uh, for approval through the council on my employee manual. I'm just not finished with okay. the whole employee manual. And yes, you might ask, when was the last time the employee manual was updated? It was 2010. We're fixing to adopt one. So we're, we're cleaning it up right now. Okay. I just wanted y'all to understand where I'm going with this, where our side on this uh, liability standpoint is, and I, it, I don't look at it as a bad thing. I look at it as a good thing. We're cleaning up another part of our books going forward. We don't have this outstanding liability. As you reach 2020, you're like, hey, we're free and clear. We're good to go. So that's the way I look at it, Council. Yeah, any questions? Uh, thank you for your. Thank you for the transparency and the professionalism in this. It's, uh, like you said, the city's not going to be liable for 30 years or whatever. Thank you. Agenda number seven. Item number seven is reports from the city manager and council members. You want me to go? Go for it. I would like to thank Chief Babb and his staff, um, they did a presentation yesterday at Academy Schools, um, and I got to, he invited me, so I actually got out of the office for about 45 minutes and got to go over, and uh, I got to watch the drug dogs, and I'll be, t uh, it, it was interesting because you, you want to see kids, and, you know, with the oohs and ahs and the jaw dropping, you, you can go watch it because those drug dogs are quite amazing, and I just, I thought that was wonderful for uh, a group of third graders to get to see. And I thank you, Chief Babb, and your staff for putting on that presentation for kids because I know it was a highlight in their day. So it was wonderful. <clears throat> the <clears throat> I gave you all a list of a draft, and that's all it is, is a draft at this point as it pertains to the GO bond that we have discussed prior. Um, it's a list of streets um, that uh, we're kind of looking at at this point. Uh, we're going to move forward with this. Um, we've been in contact. I've had Larry's help. Um, I've had Rick Smith's help as we continue to go this, for, this way. Um, hopefully we will have something uh, in stone for y'all um, as we get through this transition. Beginning of January, we should have it for you uh, as it pertains to a resolution going out for the GEO bonds. Uh, and we've identified some streets. Um, we will continue uh, to look at that and figure out, you know, is that the way we want to go? I'm just kind of giving y'all a draft to kind of say and kind of show you where we're at uh, moving forward. 
the uh, list of fees I gave y'all two months ago, um, I had some staff uh, compile every fee that the city of Gaiman has at this time. I have not added it to our website, um, but in January, I will. So I would like for you all to understand that if there's a question on a fee, um, it will be on our website. Um, it's going to be a link. You can click on it. And hopefully as we go forward in the event something were to change uh, with council, we can just simply update a fee schedule. And that way everyone is aware of it, that it's transparent to say, here's a fee. This is what we charge. This is what you can expect. Um, it's a good communication factor. And I think it's a great way of communicating. And I commend my staff for putting all their hard work uh, into the fee schedule. So that's that's a good thing. I just want to let you know that's coming as well. And we will be closing <clears throat> at noon on the 31st. Um, we have to finalize year-end reports and along with the transition, everything coming back over, it's going to be a quite hectic day here in City Hall. I think closing at noon so we can finalize everything for the year and uh, making sure we're going to double test everything to make sure we're ready to roll as it pertains to January 2nd um, with IBTS being gone and we're back to the city. I just want to let you all know and let everyone else know that we will be closing early on the 31st. Um, we will be gone. Uh, we'll shut the doors at noon. We'll all be here probably scratching our heads, but we'll get through it. Um, it's a transition. It's never easy, but we're getting back to it. And um, Brand new year, fresh start. Correct. <clears throat> Correct. So we are going to be closing at noon, and then we will be closed Monday and Tuesday next week for uh, Christmas. And on top of that, I wanted to say um, Merry Christmas, Council. Happy New Year. Thank you all. It's been a great year. I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we've done some wonderful things, and I thank you for your support and your council. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to 2019. With that, that's all I've got. Anybody else? Anything? Merry Christmas. Yeah. He, Merry did Christmas. Him, he did give him the card. Didn't I don't know. Oh. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Anybody have anything? Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> well, it's, as I, I'll echo Mitch's sentiments. It's been it's been quite a year. It's a year that we can look back and change as we go forward make some positive, very positive changes. And I think 2019 is going to be a lot better year for all of us. And uh, I've witnessed the Mr. Wagner's staff rally behind him and step up. And uh, I think it's going to be a good year. We've got a bunch of, a bunch of very wonderful employees that work for the city of Guyman and do, do the jobs we ask that they do for us. We don't ask them to do them, but they do it. So I hey, Merry Christmas and thanks for bringing Wells up to see us. And uh, I'm sure we'll see more of him as the years go by. So anyway, that's all. Mr. Petty, you got anything? Merry Christmas. Uh -huh. Go, go, folks. go folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're adjourned until 2019.